So you may be asking, why does the blower motor spin so much faster? Well, just like a manual transmission gives you different gears, a wiper motor has gears too. Inside the wiper motor, now I've taken the cover off so that you see you have a basic motor, but then there are gears inside. And these gears are what slow it down. The blower motor has no gears, no resistance, you just have maximum speed. Now remember, this is where we left off. I asked you what they are. Yes, they're capacitors. And a capacitor is a bit like a battery, but it has a different job to do. A capacitor is a device that stores electrical energy in an electric field. Now this may sound a little odd, and that energy is going to be used like a brake. Yes, I said brake. Now why do we need a brake? We'll give a motor power and ground, and it spins, right? And remove either the power or ground, and it coasts until it stops. Now this will not work in a wiper motor. Just like a car in motion needs a brake to stop, a wiper motor in motion needs brakes as well to stop spinning. Now believe it or not, this wiper motor utilizes dynamic braking. Now let's take a closer look at this wiper. Now remember, I warned you that it might get a little confusing. Well, that confusion starts right now. Here are the capacitors. Now this concept of dynamic braking is a topic all in itself, and I'm going to give you more info on that at the end of this video. But for now, let's continue with the diagram so that we can make sure that we understand it. We have one more thing to cover, and that's the intermittent control. When we zoom in on that to get a better look at it, you can see the diagram and the symbol that represents it. So what does this symbol represent? An on-off switch? A resistor or a potentiometer? You're right, it's a potentiometer or an adjustable voltage sensor. Now it is a solid box, right? Or a complete unit. And here's a little picture of what that complete unit looks like. Now it gets power when it is selected. So we move the switch to interval and the power goes up through the intermittent wiping control and it goes into the wiper intermittent control. Now that potentiometer or the adjustable sensor, we're going to color that blue because it is a signal. So it is an adjusted voltage that is going to go up and report to the same intermittent wiper control. Now what happens inside the solid state control is determined by the logic programming. It uses the adjustable sensor input and sends out a timed output on pin 53M. Now you can see that it goes out on 53M and it goes to the interval pin number 1A, which is down here. Now it's important here, you must note this. When interval is selected, it only applies to low speed. Now these dotted lines mean that all of these switches move together. And when we select interval, it only applies to the low speed. Now note, position 2, O for off, and 1A, they all feed the same wire, right? Note that position 2 here goes nowhere, there's no wire attached to 2, and position 2 down here feeds the separate headlight cleaner system. Only position 1A feeds power to the wiper motor. Now power now comes through the interval position and not through the speed positions. Watch the power travel. Now what happens inside that solid state control is determined by the logic programming, right? Remember that solid state control sends out a timed power. We can watch it move here. Goes to the motor, it finds ground, and the info only operates on the low speed. Now, that leads us to why we need braking. If we did not brake the running motor, we could never achieve a true interval, or we could never stop at a specific park position. 
Now if you'll take a close look inside here, we know this motor just spins constantly and it will coast to a stop. However, we need to reach a park position. So if we did not have any kind of braking to this and this motor, the gear was spinning just like the motor was and coasting, these contact points, when they touch in the plastic part, it's an open circuit. But as this spins, they touch on the brass part, make it a closed circuit. So if this just continued to spin and it just simply coasted, you could actually touch that point, but then the momentum would carry it past and it would continue to run. So in order to be able to reach a park position, we have to be able to get this gear to stop at the point that the two contact points are on the plastic. That's why we need braking. Now the wiper motor only spins in one direction. The transmission arms enable it to move back and forth. When the motor is turned off, it will coast until it stops. So there needs to be a braking action to stop it from coasting. And that braking action is a counter electromotive force called dynamic braking. Counter or back electromotive force, which is what it's sometimes called, it's often called back EMF. It's voltage that pushes in the opposite direction. So you have a primary magnetic field when it's turned on and it's moving in one direction. That is a magnetic field that is building power. Then you have a, when you turn it off, you have an induced magnetic field in the opposite direction and that induced current tries to stop the field from building. Now I could try and explain this a whole lot better, but here's your last assignment. Dorian McIntyre has made a great video that explains this better than I can. So here's the link. Copy and paste it into YouTube. Watch and learn. Motor generator and dynamic braking. So the wiper motor is not what you think. It is so much more. And so is the diagram. Now if you like videos like this, let me know. Thanks.